to market analysis uh, perspective of the um, UK and European indices uh, obviously we're just about to close now okay so this should be very interesting hopefully I can give my insight as to uh, what's going to happen in the next 24 hours or so uh, from a day trading perspective okay so from into market analysis per perspective the uh, uh, Asian markets overnight uh, were quite stellar uh, well, well, basically stellar in the perspective uh, from a perspective that the uh, US markets had, uh, had absolutely been smoked overnight okay the Shanghai obviously finished more or less uh, up by five points the Nikkei it totally ignored the US and the Hang Seng uh, uh, more or less uh, did uh, actually come under pressure but the most important thing was that the Shanghai was very very impressive uh, that's, that, that's the uh, that's the important aspect of it I mean you can call it more or less flat down minus 0.75 percent but the Shanghai is the index I generally tend to observe and the Nikkei okay and them two were pretty uh, well uh, uh, let's just say the Shanghai did well because of the weaker uh, data uh, coming out from uh, the uh, overnight which obviously uh, increased speculation that uh, we'd get more QE okay uh, or more interest rate cuts so easy monetary policy hence the reason why the European indices are up quite substantially compared to its uh, UK and US peers okay so that's basically a thought process with regards to that okay and obviously you've got the Nikkei as well the Nikkei higher given the fact that the yen pairs USD JPY obviously quite substantially higher whilst the uh, euro JPY was getting smoked due to the uh, QE uh, obviously angle okay so that's basically where we were so from my perspective that is generally considered to be bullish if you do have the uh, uh, Asian markets ignoring the US markets because obviously the button that's passed on is a risk off button and if obviously Asian markets are not interpreting it as such uh, I generally tend to favor for the uh, Asian uh, markets interpretation okay than the uh, the US especially in terms of momentum etc going into the European market open uh, the European markets at the moment you've got the FTSE Euro stocks CAC and Deutsch, obviously the DAX, Swiss, uh, IBEX itself, all basically uh, under quite a, a lot of pressure. Uh, obviously, regardless of how the Asia markets obviously uh, came under came under from the outset. Okay, well, obviously under under pressure, uh, and uh, given the fact that the Asia markets are totally ignored, the U.S. price action, the uh, DAX, as we all know, is currently trading at 1,100. The CAC, Euro stocks, all rallied higher. Okay. Uh, the only laggard at the moment is the FTSE, although it has held its 200 MA, which I'll discuss from a technical perspective very, sh very shortly. Okay, so Mr. Draghi obviously gave his uh, dovish remarks in the morning. The euro obviously collapsed; it's currently at one well below the 1.06 handle. Okay, and uh, certainly under immense pressure, uh, and that obviously caused the uh, the euro obviously uh, sell-off is in direct, uh, as an indirect uh, or inverse relationship, obviously with your European indices. In theory, that should have sent the um, the actual uh, FTSE higher as well, along with U.S. indices. But that seems doesn't seem to be the case at the moment, which is slightly worrying from my perspective. Slightly worrying from my perspective. Okay. Anyway, either way, we have to respect price action for what it is. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, with regards to the economic data, then, so let's have a look at the economic data that came out. Other other uh, other than that, uh, let's go and observe. Okay. So. Chinese industrial production retail sales, I've already explained, came out weaker, therefore interpreted as being bullish on Shanghai. Uh, you had the uh, Mr. Draghi speech, obviously, at 8 o'clock. Obviously, that gave the, uh, even though the U.S. market is sort of quite substantially, the markets totally ignore that. Asian Q, given the fact that they ignored it as well, and obviously QE lifts all bolts in theory, okay, but not the U.K. and uh, U.S. bolt at the moment. Uh, rising tide of QE should technically lift all boats, but it isn't. Okay, so then we had the uh, UK data out this morning. Industrial production came out in line, which was okay. Uh, month on month, slightly negative. Uh, minus 0.5%. Uh, manufacturing production negative as well. Uh, and year on year negative as well. So that obviously kept the FTSE under pressure from the outset. Although I did attempt to short the FTSE uh, at, that, at that level. Okay, then we had uh, the... Uh, I mean, CPI out of uh, Spain is totally irrelevant for now. Uh, mortgage applications is irrelevant as well. Obviously, crude stocks, the crude data that came out, that obviously sent the FTSE uh, falling below the no, 6700 level because obviously uh, the oil price fell, currently trading at $47.5 as we speak. 
Okay, then we had Mr. Will's speech, which obviously was interpreted as being dovish, uh, because he was a hawk previously, uh, or has been hawkish previously, and he basically started to talk down any rate cut. Okay, then we had the GDP estimate and IESR, uh, obviously at 3 p.m., uh, and that obviously came out in line, which negated the previous week data, so therefore the UK growth, uh, obviously, still a uh, trajectory, still remains uh, in place. Okay, so that's basically the interpretation. Okay, that's the interpretation. So, if that's the interpretation, then um, the fact that we've had oil into support now potentially, okay, we have US markets potentially into support, which I'll discuss in my US market video. I'll go through it very, very, very quickly here, okay. And uh, given the fact that the GDP estimate negates the previous one, ne negates the previous weaker data in the morning, and given the fact that Mr. Will comments, obviously, any any uh, any talk of uh, interest rates. Uh, being pushed forward obviously should be interpreted as being as being bullish for equities especially with regards to the FTSE it just needs a fu fundamental catalyst to potentially propel higher okay uh, and obviously given the fact that the Ch Shanghai was obviously interpreted as being uh, bullish or the economic data out of China easy monetary policy that should certainly have an impact and an effect as well okay that's basically where we stand now with regards to the technicals then uh, given the fact that QE is basically the uh, the, the tide that should technically be lifting all boats and isn't at the moment, which is a shame. Okay, let's see exactly what's happening here. I think we should start off with the DAX because the DAX basically gives you the interpretation of what, what the market should be doing. And as you can see, good volume here and the market's rallying. So from my perspective, if the German DAX is higher, everything else should be higher as well. Just my interpretation, folks. Okay, that's my interpretation of intermarket analysis. The French CAC, as you can see, uh, you had one, a stellar rally in the morning. Obviously, uh, you had the markets closing at 4880. It's rallied almost 120 points. I mean, you can see that on the market close. The MISEX obviously is up today. The Athens market under pressure, given the uh, Greece uncertainty that still surrounds us. We have had a meeting. Um, obviously, that is being interpreted as being bullish uh, for now. Okay, the IBEX, as you can see, very, very bullish. Deutsch, I mean the DAX itself, I mean when you have the DAX up 313 points, there's only one way the global markets can go, okay, and that's higher. Any other way other than higher is circumspect to me, from my interpretation anyway, okay. Everybody has their interpretation, I remain on the bullish side, regardless of how US indices are behaving or UK indices are behaving at this very juncture, it's irrelevant, your interpretation is what counts. The CAC, as you can see, up 2.5%, and the Euro stocks up quite substantially at 2.5%. So almost 2.5% in all European indices, and yet the rest of the markets are lagging. Yes, I understand the fact that the dollar equation, given the fact that the dollar's rising, and uh, obviously Europe certainly seems to, because it's a zero-sum game, they seem to be winning at this very present moment in time. Uh, that's totally correct, but you also have the concept of intermarket analysis, where one index lifts, obviously, the whole region. Uh, and if the European consumer is going to be um, obviously uh, uh, becoming more prosperous via QE and obviously assets and, and risk etc is going to be embraced, assets are going to rise in value, then that can only be good for the global economy because a stronger European consumer, uh, wh whether or not it's been incorrectly pumped via QE or artificial genetically modified uh, consumer, call it GM crops, uh, that's what QE is, okay, it genetically modifies the economy. Uh, so a genetically modified economy or genetically modified consumer, uh, a stronger consumer consuming more can only be good, okay, for global markets. So that's my interpretation. Obviously, given the fact that the Greece concerns certainly do remain, but we should overcome them. And obviously, given the fact that European markets are trading higher, they're not concerned about Greece. If anything, Greece is a, a short squeeze catalyst because as soon as you get bearish news on Greece, the markets continue to push to new highs because everybody thinks they can short the market. And that's obviously the case with regards to the German DAX. So respect price action. There's no way anybody can tell you that this market is bearish. Regardless of what your fundamental understanding is, price action is price action, folks. The tape is always right, okay? And the tape is telling you that this market wants to go higher. Okay, right, so that's basically where we are with regards to the European markets. We can look at European 350 as well. I mean, this is slightly lagging, the European 350, but this is just on the, on the amount of time before this breaks out as well. Okay, now now that we've understood the European markets, then let's look at that in the context of the FTSE 100. FTSE 100 is severely, severely underachieving, okay? Severely, severely underachieving, and it's lagging as well to a large extent, okay? So this 
So from my perspective, from a technical, um, fundamentally the FTSE is a buy from my understanding. Uh, yes, the oil price has come under pressure to a, to, to a certain extent and obviously is, is, is holding the FTSE at, ra at ransom and obviously we already know that commodity stocks or commodity indices of obviously the mining sector was hit today, the oil and gas obviously hit today, we had tobacco uh, shares hit today as well. A lot of in, uh, sectors that were hit, okay. But given the fact that, regardless of that, uh, obviously uh, bearish, uh, obviously uh, connotation, the FTSE still held a 200 MA. So that, from my perspective, that is uh, interpreted as being bullish. If the FTSE is held at 200 MA, that is classed as being bullish, from my understanding and my interpretation. Uh, given the fact that 200 MA has held, okay. Uh, the 60-minute chart of the FTSE 100. Let's observe that. Let's see where that is showing it wants, where it's telling us it wants to go. Okay, so say a 60 minute chart at the moment, failed bear flag. So we've had a failed bear, I mean, this is a bearish continuation. Your red candle, green candle consolidates within, red candle flush, and then obviously consolidation again, fails to flush, and the market rallies on Mr. Wheel's comments and obviously the uh, GNIESR data, and obviously European stocks rallying as well, and the US markets into uh, obviously. Uh, potential support so you have this uh, here and we can look at it on a, on, a, on a 10 minute chart much more detail so if I go into it in 10 minute chart remember a failed pattern equals an emotive move in the opposite direction ie a short squeeze that's basically what I expect to occur so let's see exactly what will transpire here on a 10 minute chart It'll give us a better understanding okay so if you have a, a falling uh, contracting wedge pattern generally considered to be bullish okay um, from my understanding, whether you want to call it a descending tri uh, triangle, etc., the whole concept is we made lower lows, lower highs, and bang, off we went to the races. So the market's obviously negated that uh, and obviously wants to push higher. Uh, now you've got uh, your left shoulder here. From my understanding of TA, you have a, a double bottom potential, obviously, uh, uh, head, and then obviously the market's pulled back slightly, and obviously now wants to coil higher. So given the fact that it wants to coil higher your pivot low was around the 6690 you can call your neckline around this region here 6720 so you're looking at potential 6740 to 6760 uh, a target on the FTSE 100 on this inverted head and shoulders formation okay that's basically my interpretation now let's just cross reference that with regards to the FTSE volatility index as you can see into the 50 MA and up to the upper trend line resistance diagonal trend line resistance so therefore this is resistance Therefore, the FTSE will obviously come into support. Okay, FTSE 350 again is into previous resistance equal support, horizontal support. Yes, we have negated the, the, the purple trend line. Obviously, the flush is all for now. Whether you want to argue this is one big HNS, we'll debate that later on. For now, we are into to support given the fact that QE from Europe is dictating price action. A daily chart we've put in a potential doji, so one could argue there that this market is certainly ripe for now for a potential reversal higher. Okay, so again, it needs to be respected, regardless. Okay, uh, yes, we've broken out of that uh, line, that trend, the uh, bullish trend line, which I explained before. Excuse me, it's been a long day, tired. Okay, so we are looking to potentially move higher here on the FTSE 250, given the fact that Mr. Wheel is uh, obviously uh, being dovish now, as opposed to being hawkish prior previously, and the uh, the GBP USD uh, chart. If I just bring that up for you, as, as you can see, is broken the 1.5 handle which is obviously bullish for the FTSE 250 as you can see boom Mr. Wheel comments and obviously the market starts to starts to fall quite substantially so even prior to him they probably had the economic data before him okay and obviously we're front running him and uh, so the market's obviously bullish any drop in GBP USD is considered bullish for exporters so FTSE 250, 350 should certainly start to catch a bit hence the reason why I am long with subscribers and the live analysis service uh, yeah, with regards to my day trades uh, on the FTSE and I'm looking for a potential move higher okay given the fact that sterling's moving lower therefore that will help FTSE exports okay I think that's a wrap folks I always like to keep these videos as short as I can but unfortunately I always talk too much so I'm going to try my best to keep them short and sweet so that you have the ability to uh, to to go through these videos quickly and hopefully it helps you with your trading uh, setups okay risk on risk off wax on wax off goodbye now